Fortune. Weeknights at 7 on CBS 21. After years of questions, today is the day Three Mile Island is shutting down. From Skyview 21, you can already see less smoke coming from the towers than has been running for decades. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Jesse McDonough. Right now, officials are getting ready to speak about the shutdown. CBS 21's Karina Chung is live in Middletown. Karina. Good afternoon, Jesse. Leaders have been pushing this message for the past year. The clock is ticking on nuclear energy. Now it's truly the end for Three Mile Island. The reactor scheduled to shut down here at noon. I'm going to take you over here so you can just see there is still some steam rising from the cooling towers. Now today, nuclear energy supporters will talk about the impact of the closure of TMI, but also actions necessary to prevent premature closure of the state's other four plants. Now as for Three Mile Island, this month, the staff um, will start its decommissioning. By the end of the month, the staff of more than 600 will go down to about 300. By 2022, the staff will drop to about 50. Now, officials here that will be scheduled to speak include Dauphin County Commissioner Mike Priest, Rep Tom Mahaffey, Londonderry Township Supervisor Anna Dale, and several other people. Now, this press conference is scheduled to start here at noon, but we are still waiting for speakers to come here to the podium. We'll bring you back here live when that press conference starts. But for now, reporting live in Middletown, I'm Karina Chung, CBS 21 News. Thanks, Karina. Three Mile Island is a staple of Central PA community, and everyone is reacting this afternoon. CBS 21's Brian Sheen is live in Middletown. Brian, what are people saying about it finally shutting down? Yeah, Jesse, the day is finally here. We're at the 230 Cafe in High Spire. I'm joined now by Shelby Wright's owner of the cafe. This has been a long time coming. What are the feelings today now that we know it's finally shutting down? Uh, it's basically pretty anticlimactic just because we've known that it has been coming. Um, it's sad to see it go. It's going to be a change, you know, in the horizon, seeing the steam no longer coming from the... Um, from every, from the towers, yeah, and uh, you know it, it's a sad day for everyone. I think that is directly involved with it. You've been in the area for 12 years. This business has been open for 12 years. You've had a lot of workers come in. What are you guys? How are you guys going to? How's this going to impact you? Uh, not so much from the business side. I'd say more from the personal side. Uh, we have friends, <clears throat> family members that work down there that have to change. You know, schools, their kids, longer drives to work. Luckily, they you know a lot of them can find jobs in the in the field. Um, um, but they're guaranteed work for a year and a half, and then it starts over again. So you're just kind of sitting and waiting, and you know, have to change your life as it goes. Well, it's going to be the end of the uh, end of an era, shall we? Thank you so much. Of course, we are going to go now and talk to some of the people here uh, in the cafe how this is going to affect them. Coming up tonight at five o'clock and six o'clock, we're going to get some more community reaction for you. We're live in High Spire. I'm Brian Sheehan, CBS 21 News. Jesse. Thank you, Brian. Exelon, which owns Three Mile Island, announced they would close the facility back in May. It comes after state lawmakers were unable to pass a measure that would have forced power companies to buy a percentage of nuclear energy for their grids. TMI had failed to sell energy at power auctions for several years. But when you think of Three Mile Island, the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is the partial nuclear meltdown. This year marked 40 years since the infamous event, and just about everyone in the region has a story about it. I, I don't remember how it happened exactly, but the janitor came in and shut the windows, and then all of a sudden, everybody was dismissed. My grandparents and I left, and we left and went to Altoona at that point to wait out to see what was happening. It was like a, it was like a metal taste. That's about the closest I can come to it. But the history of TMI goes on after that event. Unit 2 shut down following the disaster. The facility was also sold to multiple companies before ending with Exelon. And 10 years ago, it had its license to operate renewed until 2034. With Three Mile Island shutting down, the next step is decommissioning. That will start with transferring spent fuel from cooling pools at the facility to storage units to decay. That's expected to happen by 2022. Officials say they will not be able to begin dismantling the towers until 2074. That's 55 years from now. Staffing will be decreased in three phases to 50 employees over the next three years. 
You can find extensive coverage of Three Mile Island shutdown at CBS21.com. Coming up in about 10 minutes, we'll take you back in time and how coverage of TMI has evolved. Happening now, it's a waiting game in Texas. People waiting for floodwaters from Tropical Depression in Melda to begin receding so they can see just how bad the damage is. Some say the flooding you see here is worse than Hurricane Harvey. So far, two people have died from the storm. And take a look at this. The floodwaters so high in some spots, barges broke loose, smashing into a bridge. The highway there has been closed down. It's not known when it'll reopen. I think it was a lot worse than what, what kind of the general public had anticipated. I got the things that, that were important, put them in my backpack, and just walked out. The, the water was about uh, knee high wow. by that time. The water is not expected to start receding until later this weekend. Meteorologist Steve Knight joins us live now. Yeah, Jesse, you know, the good news for those folks is that the worst from Imelda is now over, but they're not out of the woods completely. We'll show you that in just a moment. But did you step outside this morning early on? I'll tell you what, we've got a couple of days until fall, but uh, boy, you could have fooled me this morning. Look at York getting all the way down to 40 degrees uh, this morning. These are those lows, mid 40s in Lebanon and in Lancaster. Definitely wrap and peel weather here today. Start out with the jacket, maybe the heat on in the car. You won't need it this afternoon. We've got fair skies once again for you. Now, still some rain from Imelda, but you notice it's not that real heavy duty rain that they've been seeing in eastern Texas and along that Louisiana border. So things are at least settling down there a little bit. Over the weekend, we're looking at plenty of sunshine, just warming up tomorrow and Sunday with highs getting into the mid 80s. Jesse. Thanks, Steve. Right now, protests are going on around the world with the goal of saving the environment. But first, we are going to head on out now to the press conference here at TMI. Closing prematurely and taking with it 675 full time family sustaining jobs and a $60 million annual payroll. One year ago, we announced the clock is ticking. State Representative Tom Mahaffey stepped up to the plate and sponsored legislation to save the plants across the state of Pennsylvania and clean energy for future generations. Today, unfortunately, time has run out on Three Mile Island. A plant with many years of operating life that is closing prematurely, and it was all avoidable. It was on September 2nd, 1974, that Unit 1 began generating its first megawatts of commercial nuclear power. So today's closing comes almost 45 years to the day later. And we know that it could have kept operating for at least another 15 to 17 years. Here's just a few of the things that we're going to be losing. Since 2000, TMI Unit 1 has contributed $6 million to local charitable organizations and nonprofits. $6 million. TMI employees over that same period of time have invested 40,000 hours volunteering here in the local community. 40,000 hours of time volunteering in the local community by Three Mile Island employees. TMI provides close to a million dollars annually in local property taxes to the Lower Dolphin School District, Londonderry Township, and Dauphin County. And I'm sure my Clean Jobs for Pennsylvania co-chairman Joe Gussler will describe this as well, but today would be the day that 1,200 skilled union laborers came in here to Dauphin County to spend 30 days working during the outage the equivalent of 36,000 room nights. That is gone forever. And I repeat, that is now gone. Again, you are listening to the press conference from TMI, the energy plant shutting down for good today. He spoke on what they will be losing in that community of Middletown, 40,000 hours that those employees 
did volunteering, $1 million in property taxes, and of course, 1,200 skilled labor jobs. Coming up, thousands gathering in Nevada, planning to storm Area 51, their battle cry, they can't stop us all. The event's underway after a social media joke turned into a viral sensation. And our coverage of TMI shutdown continues. We take you back to the moments after the infamous partial meltdown. This fall, Thursday's a night of remarkable women on CBS. Awesome! Amazing! With Oscar winner Allison Janney and Anna Ferris on Mom. Jump! Ow! You completely missed my arm. Then, Emmy winner Patricia Heaton comes home to CBS in Carol's second act. I am so excited to be here. Her biggest adventure starts today. I'm an intern, just like you. But you have a long coat, like a resident. Well, it's not a long coat, I'm just short. It all begins CBS Thursday. Happening now, thousands of people flooding Nevada in hopes of seeing an alien. Take a look. This, they are huddled around the entrance, having a lot of fun, but it's right outside Area 51. The event started as a social media joke, but it exploded. Those at the gates today say they just want to know what the government is hiding. No, I'm quite disappointed in everybody. Okay. They can't stop all of us. I'm enjoying it. I just want to see the aliens. Uh, I think the movement is cool. I think we deserve to know what the government is hiding. And maybe they're not hiding anything. Maybe they're, I don't know. I just want answers. Oh, man, that tinfoil hat. Steve and I can't get enough of it. Today, a weekend-long festival is set to begin in the town of Rachel. Just a few miles from the installation, dozens of musical and comedic acts are set to perform. A symbol of Central PA officially shuts down. TMI closes down today, but its impact will live on. And we're taking a closer look back in time for a look at how the partial meltdown is being remembered. Oh, it's just been a beautiful week of weather. Can we keep it rolling here into the weekend? I'll let you know with my first morning forecast. This is a legal alert for users of Roundup Weed Killer. If you or a loved one used Roundup Weed Killer and have been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, you may be entitled to compensation. In an August 9th, 2019 Bloomberg News story, it is reported that Bayer AG is proposing to pay as much as $8 billion to settle more than 18,000 lawsuits, alleging its Roundup Weed Killer was responsible for the plaintiff's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Call for a free case review now. Strict deadlines may apply. Paid spokesperson. Attention. Marking the end of an era, Three Mile Island is officially shutting down, ending all energy production today. It's a move that's been several years in the making after the facility failed to consistently sell power. Officials are talking right now about the closure. We're going to go back live to Middletown. All of a sudden closed today. We start at ground zero because of this plant closing. The amount of megawatts that it produces concerns me greatly. If we go into times when we need that reliable, clean energy power in the hottest days of the year and the coldest days of the year, are we going to be able to afford to lose that? I don't think so. But this is an ongoing saga that doesn't just stop here. This is a saga that special interests have been against us through this whole fight, have put millions and millions of dollars into a PR campaign that says no new bailout, that is, have done things to benefit themselves and not think about the people of Pennsylvania and the hard work that they've done, as my father did when he built this, helped build this plant back in the 70s. That put food on and our table. a lot of people at this me. press conference unhappy over TMI shutting down this man here. Um, everyone speaking about TMI and all the memories they have with it, how it's personally affected them, how it has been in terms of an economy for Middletown, 40,000 hours that those employees put in volunteering, 1,200 skilled labor jobs they're going to be losing, and of course, $1 million in property taxes. Over the past 40 years, CBS 21 has been dedicated to bringing you everything when it comes to TMI, starting with the infamous partial nuclear meltdown. Here's a look at some of the reports we've brought to you over the decades. 
Government officials said that a breakdown in an atomic power plant in Pennsylvania today is probably the worst nuclear reactor accident to date. Most of us were just on our way to work, and we weren't even informed of this until about 7.30 or 8 o'clock. The in initial problem happened about 4.30 this morning due to a feed water problem in the secondary plant. Metropolitan Edison has given you and us conflicting information. Medit officials admit there's still a number of questions that need to be answered. We also ordered the closing of any schools within this area. My primary concern in coming here this afternoon has been to learn as much as I possibly can as president. By doing so, they hope to bring attention to their cause and towards the closing of the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station. The steady crowd of the curious has had little impact in terms of tourism dollars in the Middletown area. For in one swift blow, the English letters TMI became global in importance. Of the 8,000 women who live within a 10-mile radius of TMI and were pregnant either during or right after the accident, only a small percentage were affected. Even though there's disagreement over whether the current evacuation plan would work, no one wants to be forced to find out. Before coming to TMI, most of the control room operators had never before worked on a commercial nuclear reactor. Can the nuclear power industry ever dispel the fears that those people have? Today's fifth anniversary of the accident began with the traditional candlelight vigil. Officials say the plan could be operating in six to eight months. And you can find extensive coverage of Three Mile Island shutdown at CBS21.com, including a better look at the economic impact the closing will have on the community and a breakdown of the decommissioning process. And now, CBS21 News first warning weather with meteorologist Steve Knight. Well, summer lovers, this is it. Here comes fall. That's right, we've got this weekend, and basically, that's it. Fall officially arriving Monday morning, very early at 3.50 a.m. However, if you were out there at 3.50 a.m. this morning, it was already feeling like fall. Look at the low temperatures uh, from this morning, and a couple really caught my eye. York getting all the way down to 40 degrees, 41 this morning in Sealand's Grove. So it was definitely jacket or sweatshirt weather for the kids out at the bus stop, but you won't need it this afternoon. And I know fall arrives on Monday, but... It's not really going to be feeling like it all that much. We're going to be up above average. Our average high right now is 74 degrees, but look at our trend here over the next 10 days. Not only this weekend, it'll be cooler next week. We'll be back down into the 70s, but we're still going to trend up above average. So we remain very quiet throughout the afternoon. Perfect night for high school football. A few clouds try to build in tomorrow, but I think they'll kind of get blocked off by the same ridge of high pressure that's been giving us such nice weather here this week. So one more day, we keep that humidity in check. But the story of the weekend, it's going to be warmer and it's also going to be more humid. Uh, the muggy meter just kind of keeps going up and up and up the more it updates. And it's all the way up to very humid now uh, for Sunday afternoon. So real summer-like feel. Too bad uh, all of the public pools are closed at this point because it's going to be pool weather by Sunday afternoon. Let's get you caught up with Hurricane Jerry downgraded now to a Category 1 storm. Jerry's going to drift to the northwest toward the United States. But then thankfully, Monday into Tuesday, get picked up by a front that's going to push Jerry back out to sea. So that is good news for us. However, if you look at the spaghetti models here on Jerry, here's the island of Bermuda. There's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and it wants to take it straight toward Bermuda here early next week. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. But in the meantime, another beautiful afternoon, just a little warmer this afternoon than where we've been the last couple of days. The sunshine looking for that high temperature uh, right around 80 degrees. We talked about high school football, Friday night rivalries and a good old fashioned rivalry here, a mid pen rivalry. We've got Camp Hill and Palmyra tonight. That is our Friday night rivals game. Catch it tonight, seven o'clock. My TV Central PA and beautiful weather. 74 degrees at kickoff, 66 in the second half. Yeah, you might want to bring along the sweatshirt for the second half, but really, uh, that's about it. Warm this weekend. Talked about fall getting here on Monday, Jesse. Not feeling like it. A few showers second half of the day on Monday. I don't think it's much rain and uh, back down into the 70s middle of next week, but a lot of sunshine over the weekend. You know what? That's how we like our weekends. Nice and sunny. Yep, great Thanks, for outdoor Steve. plants. Appreciate it. Getting ready for the end of an era. Three Mile Island shutting down today. We take another look at why this is happening coming up. If you're living with windows with fog between the panes, maybe they're hard to open or close, they're drafty, old, outdated, well, maybe it's time to replace those windows. Hey, everybody, Joe here with BJ. BJ, we're an owner of West Shore Home, and BJ, today we're talking about how West Shore Home is making it easier for us to replace those windows right now. 
That's right, Joe. I understand shopping for windows is confusing and nobody really enjoys it. So the first way I can make it easier is to eliminate any upfront out-of-pocket expense to get that project started. So I can get rolling with no money down. That's right. And also, we also know there's a lot of misleading information out there. So the second way I'm going to make it really easy is offer a free in-home design consultation with a trained window expert. Well, BZ, there's such a wide variety of windows on the market. There's the overpriced national name brands. There's the low-priced, low-quality windows. How do I know which ones are best for me? All right. So when it comes to windows, value happens when the performance of the window exceeds the price. So the third way I'm going to make it easy is to give a personal guarantee that West Shore Homes windows are going to outperform any window on the market, even the most expensive ones, for a lot lower price and a better warranty. We offer a 50-year warranty, which is more than double the national brand. Wow, what a claim. Incredible. 50-year warranty on a true high-performance window. That's right. Please tell me they're easy to clean. This is the best part. Super easy to clean, both the top sash and bottom sash tilled in for cleaning and really easy on the maintenance. So this is the last way we're going to make it easy. You're never going to have to worry about taking care of these windows. You're never going to have to paint them. Even if you want the grids in the windows, we're going to seal them right between the glass and make it super easy. BJ, I love it. Thanks so much, folks. When it comes to window replacement, West Shore Home, faster, more affordable, and easier too. Give them a call today. Take advantage of this great offer. It's their end of summer sale. They're doing 20% off all window projects and 20% off your installation too. Plus, your project started with no money down. And if you call right now, two fantastic finance options. No payments, no interest for one full year or your brand new windows installed for as little as $99 a month. Call West Shore Home today. Join our growing family of residents because you'll find Poplar Run is the place for you. Whether you're a pet lover or a puzzle maker, whether you're a painter or a piano player, whether you love the water or prefer to cruise on dry land, whether you've served our country or have enjoyed making a home. How do I know? Because I'm not only the director of sales, my mom is also a resident and we made the choice for Poplar Run together. Get on our waiting list today. And we want to recap our top story. It's the end of an era at Three Mile Island. Skyview 21 giving us a bird's eye view of the facility that is ending its energy production and shutting down today. Officials say they closed the facility because it was losing money and was not able to compete in the energy market. Next is the decommissioning process, which will take decades. And right now, protests are going on around the world with the goal of saving the environment. You're looking live at one of the demonstrations taking place right now in Harrisburg on the Capitol steps. The event is part of the global climate strike, a series of worldwide events trying to bring awareness to climate change. And check this out, a PA woman and a bear scare each other. After running into each other, Kira McCord says, whoa. She went around the corner to get her mail. When she walked around, she saw that black bear in Monroe County. They were able to get away from each other. McCord says she doesn't know where that bear went. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, bears, as soon as they see humans, oftentimes will get a little spooked and go away, which is a good thing. Well, that is a good thing. Yeah, I want them to thing. be afraid of humans. Yes, absolutely. Okay, hey, uh, looking great heading into the weekend here, Jesse. We've got sunshine for you this afternoon. Look for a high temperature, just a little warmer than where we got to yesterday, uh, right around 80 degrees. Perfect night for high school football. Oh man, enjoy temperatures that are going to be in the mid 70s. Second half will drop it down into the mid 60s. And here's the rest of your first warning seven day forecast. So plenty of sunshine here heading into the weekend. It's just going to be warm temperatures into the mid 80s, bit more humid. We'll get back down into the 70s again by the middle of next week. All right. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. That does it for us here on CBS 21 News at noon. Make sure you join us at five as we continue our team coverage of the shutdown of Three Mile Island. We're going to send you now to a CBS News special report with the president holding a joint news conference with the prime minister of Australia. And the price goes up four dollars, five dollars, and now it's heading down rapidly. That tells you that would have happened uh, years ago. It would have gone up fifty dollars. It would have doubled. And this was a blip. So it's been really amazing what we've been able to do. I think the voters understand that. I don't think it has any impact on the election. Now, if something happened, I think that would probably be positive for the election, but uh, that's okay. I do think assigning USMCA on a bipartisan basis with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and everybody else, very bipartisan. I think that's very important for our country. It's truck month at L.B. Smith Ford. Get behind the wheel of a 20.